Yo, hello and welcome to the Compendium of Discomfort. My name is Michael, today with glasses, because why not? It fits the theme today. And uh, yeah, what we're gonna do is talk about another release by Saka. Um, before I talked about uh, yes, uh, Yusaku Matsumoto's um, Made in Japan, which is a very interesting movie that you should watch. And this one is very interesting as well. I think it's still very good, but maybe so far the Saka release that I have the most complaints about it. It's, it's still still good, don't worry. But uh, yeah, I have a few few things that I'm... I, I expected after, after Made in Japan, I expected it tiny bit more but it's okay uh, let's maybe first check the um, cast uh, about the director I talked last time you can check the video about um, made in Japan I, know I talked about the director let's talk about the cast we have um, first Masahiro Higashide who is a little bit um, not so well loved actor anymore. Um, he's most known for um, Asako 1 and 2, Creepy Wife of a Spy, uh, before Revenge and these things. But uh, yeah, during the shoot for Asako 1 and 2, he kind of uh, yeah, had an affair with his co star. That was uh, Erika Karata, and um, both uh, she seemingly more than he uh, had quite some trouble um, getting back into the uh, film industry and uh, continuing their career. But yeah, he's living in the mountains now and did a couple of movies. And she, for example, did the Great uh, Desert of Namibia this year, and she's in the new Netflix show, uh, The Queen of Villains. So probably she's doing okay now. That's nice to see. I mean, I, I know there's always like big uh, scandals around filmmakers or something, but uh, yeah, usually, for example, Shion Sono with his. Um, stuff uh, is way way worse than just having an affair i mean an affair is still bad but yeah i i think it's totally okay that uh after a while now they're both coming back and uh... and then yeah we have uh, takahito miura i think we talked about him a few times already was it just my my feeling uh, at least he was in a uh, shin godzilla uh, first love uh, the kingdom movies is there anything that we talked about here? I can't find it. I feel like I talked about him here a lot. Maybe that's the German podcast. Listen to the German podcast if you understand German. Um, then we have uh, Sarutoki Minagawa, who I usually just know from silly comedy movies like Mole Song or Hentai Kamen. And uh, this was one of the... the uh, rare movies where I saw him in a serious... Uh, Roll and he did well. Good. And with Masato Wada, uh, mostly known for stuff like Fukushima 50, uh, Kigahara, a uh, legend, and butterfly. Things like that. We have uh, Mai Kiryu from Helldogs, and I just took Helldogs down to put a happy end up there. Too bad. And we have Dai Ikeda, who is uh, most known for Yellow Elephant, and my beautiful man eternal that sounds weird uh, we have daichi kaneko from it's a summer film and uh, desert of namibia um, we have shinosuke abe from 13 assassins Rurouni kenshin kingdom across zero two and so on and we have kiyohiko shibukawa my most watched actor probably ever uh, according to that books no most well known for Ichi the Killer, and next one is already Wheel of Fortune and Fantasy. <laughs> but yeah, then a Blue Spring, a Wasabi. He was in Wasabi, <laughs> it's a silly movie. I think he, he made his debut in a porno star, probably. Long, oh, the, it had a different title in America. 
what was it called in America? I think um, Tokyo Rampage, because uh, obviously the word in the title is bad. And we have uh, Taijido Tamuda from Perfect Days Cure or Evil That N Does Not Exist. We have Ike Watanabe from Love and Pop Chime Gamela 3. Um, always, all these things. Um, uh, Yu Yoshida from Like Father, Like Son, My Broken Mariko. And uh, Flying Colors. And we have two more. We have Mitsuru Fukikoshi, uh, Love Exposure, Love and Pop Cold Fish. He means, uh, she has one more guy. Speaking of problematic people, and uh, we have Hide Taka Yoshioka, who is now, of course, most well known for uh, Godzilla minus one. And yeah, maybe we start with him here because I think his performance is probably the weakest thing about the whole movie. He's playing a police officer who wants to. Um, uh, publicly uh, 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 expose the police and tell them that they uh, had a slush fund and uh, yeah just um, brings this all to light and yeah for the country or whatever um, and it's all a little bit too melodramatic and the connection to the main plot is there it makes sense that we have this but yeah, it was a little bit, little bit too over the top. His performance too melodramatic. Too nah, I didn't enjoy his part in this movie so much. I mean, it's, it's still okay. It it fulfills its function, but uh, yeah, his acting suits uh, Godzilla minus one much better than this movie. I don't know, like he 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 just act so differently from everyone else and uh, yeah I was a little bit um, confused by his performance so that I, I didn't really need that but uh, yeah let's maybe continue with my, my few complaints on the one hand we had that on the other hand someone said it's a very dry movie and I mean, it's kind of true, but that comes with the territory. It's a um, legal, like, courtroom drama about a programmer, yeah? Uh, a guy who made uh, file sharing software or, yeah, yeah, like a file sharing software, peer-to-peer. -peer, um, so his idea is to have a free speech to not uh, suppress opinions and uh, all these things what we see in the movie happening for example with this police officer who tries to get the information out but obviously gets in big big trouble because uh, the police will not tolerate that and so it's, it's a good thing we have that story arc in the movie but uh, yeah so just just because we have a courtroom drama about computer programming um yeah it's it's men in suits who talk for most of the time and that's not the most exciting thing to look at for many people i like a good courtroom drama i could enjoy that part very much and uh, what annoyed me a little bit more which comes with the territory as well. It's not the most beautiful film to look at. And yeah, I will complain, or at least I will mention it, that it does the same thing like every movie, the blue and orange. But to be fair, it's bearable here. In the beginning, there were a few more scenes, especially when he was sitting in his dark, bluish room and only drinking orange juice I felt like oh my god where am I here but uh, later it got much better so that was quite bearable this time not too much complaining here but yeah it's a lot of like one colored rooms with the uh, same colored people it's uh, yeah visually not a revelation so um that's for me the, the biggest issue here with this movie. It's, it's not very fun to look at, but like I said, it's a movie about men in suits talking about computer software. What did I expect? <laughs> yeah, so it's just just a small small complaints here. Small complaints. We want to be fair. It's uh, still a very 
Uh, for me, it was a pretty enjoyable, uh, entertaining movie. I can understand if people disagree with the entertaining part and feel like it's more educating. And if we look, a sucker always has these um, messages or notes from the directors. Let me read that for you. This movie is based on a real historic person that's called Kaneko Isamu. Yeah? And here he says, Kaneko Isamu was the first person in the world to realize a network that would become the competing pillar of modern internet culture nearly 20 years ago. It is a visionary world of networks where individuals support each other to survive without relying on a central server. However, the development of Winnie came to an end with his arrest in 2004. While the Winnie trial was going on, new digital services like YouTube and iTunes were emerging from the United States. If Mr. Kaneko had not been arrested, if he were still alive, Japan might be a very different place today. What is frustrating is that a genius like him was literally robbed of his future by the seven years of his trial. I believe that the culture of a film is to shine a light on a story that has been buried in a certain point in history. My hope is to shed light on the time lived by Isamu Kaneko, a genius programmer who has remained unknown to the world, and by Mr. Dan and the defense lawyers who supported Kaneko and fought alongside him. I hope that this film will be a test for us human beings to live more freely and equally. And that pretty much brings to the point what this whole story is about. First, I think it's fascinating that the filmmaker actually makes a movie about file sharing and uh, tries to present it in a way that's not just fair, but um, yeah, basically supports its positive aspects. Of course, the whole, like, oh, they are copying movies and games and these things is a topic, and he doesn't really, it's like the main character, Mr. Uh, Kaneko, doesn't really support that, or at least it was not his intent to make the software to be used like that. It's more a side effect. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's, it's uh, quite interesting that a filmmaker decides to be like, yeah, Let's uh, tell a story about positive um, positive file sharing. <laughs> yeah. uh, what, what are the plus points? Um, free speech, how important that is. Um, which is pretty funny because now is really a time where uh, this message is very important, I think, because if we look at stuff like Twitter or, or X, uh, where they always say, oh, we want free speech, free speech, free speech, um, which is not really existing there because then uh, Mr. Musk uh, makes new rules and decides what uh, opinions are there to be supported and what should be buried somewhere or what people should be banned from the platform. Um, it's just an excuse for many people now and uh, like it's presented here as a completely like free space where people can just do whatever they feel is right. And um, that's very good. Uh, yeah, it's a very, with a finger preaching a little bit. And it's a little bit educating about the history here. But why not? Why, why shouldn't that be the topic of a movie? Why can't a movie educate me by while still being entertaining? Um, like I said, I mean, courtroom dramas are not for everyone, and usually people think probably it's more interesting if it's a murder case or something like that. But uh, no, I think that's a total, totally fine story to tell, and it's told very well. Um, the actors are really good. It's, uh, yeah, uh, very, very well worth watching movie and uh, yeah what we just had in his statement about the um, protagonist dying that's not really part of the story that's something that happens uh, basically after the story so that's not what it's about um, what i think is a little bit interesting here is uh, how they try to present this main character 
And there's this one more thing that I usually don't like so much, but it's a little bit authentic here. Um, the main issue in this movie that the um, they have here, the, the, the defendants have here, is the argumentation that if he goes to prison, basically programmers and engineers will be too scared of developing new software because they must be um yes yeah, they must fear that some other people use their software for illegal purposes and then they have to go to prison which is a very important thing to think about now that that's something that comes up in this movie very 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 early like why would you arrest the developer and not the users i mean they arrest some users but um why the developer because what he created is something that's by default first totally legal it's something that enables people to share files with each other what kind of files is so not um <laughs> yeah in his hand and if people abuse that um yeah that's a thing that's always with uh, freedom if you give people freedom some people will abuse it that's why some people will say hey uh, why can't we have freedom of speech like total freedom of speech and then abuse it to uh, insult people or say other horrible things or spread fake news or whatever no? yeah it will always happen so you always have to check what's more important this part of freedom or uh yeah people following the rules you can't rely on people having freedom and following the rules it doesn't work because people are people <laughs> and this movie uh, points that out very well that this um, developer needs to be free and uh, yeah it's a very interesting point yeah what, what i wanted to mention that i didn't enjoy a hundred percent is this idea that he needs to fight and he needs to um, be declared uh, not guilty uh, for the sake of the country and for the sake of the young people and yeah this for the country is something that I don't like so much if you watch my Godzilla minus one videos you will know that um, but here in, in in the in the uh, end credits they show some scenes of the real person um talking and uh, he talked like that so yeah you have to include that and i mean it's not so bad to want freedom for your country or for the people in your country so that's something i can uh yeah i can uh accept it's a position that i don't mind but sometimes every, every time i hear these words are for for the country for the nation i'm, I'm always a little bit ew, ew, why why not just for the people for the people is good enough do stuff for the people not for the nation um yeah anyway there are some some good points here um like i said the whole cast is uh, very good it's very funny that here mr mr higashide um, is playing this more like middle-aged programmer guy not that attractive while well, he's usually the super sexy model type um, yeah very funny casting but a uh, good choice i think so that was very nice and yeah it's, it's a good movie about an important topic it shows us again that you can't really trust the police um something i've seen a little bit uh, more recently uh there will be more videos coming about for example happy end and um here yeah, that one uh either young strangers where uh, we have a similar thing um yeah oh yeah and so some other things that are maybe a little bit not for everyone is when they try to illustrate his uh the main character's use as this wonderful um, magical time where he just goes to some shops and starts programming and they 
love his uh, programs that he does, uh, like uh, the scene they show is that he does this, this, this um, like stars in the sky, yeah, just like a really, really old school computer with like almost no graphics and he's just programming stars for this guy, this is kind of cute and then he made this like gravity based or, or physics based fighting game and a flight simulator and yeah they go very hard on this idea that he's um socially speaking not very smart like in the beginning the police oh that's another thing that's very important um here a very central element the police just gives him a paper and says sign this and then you're guilty <laughs> and uh, yeah, because he's a little bit um, not so smart about these things. He just signs it because he believes that he helps the pro process. I mean, he helps the process, but not in his... Uh, in uh, How do you say? In a manner that's not good for him. Um, yeah, so that's quite interesting. But uh, yeah, he's, he's presented as this... Yeah, like an adult child, he's just in his computer world and loves his games and stuff. Um, I don't know if the real person was like that. It's a little bit, um, yeah, like he presents the typical nerd. People can't understand him when he talks. Um, he always has to dump it down. But when it comes to other things, they're very obvious for, for other people. He's like, yeah. Yeah, no, uh, yeah, I don't know. I just sign whatever. I do whatever I'm being told to do. Yeah, even when the police comes to raid his house, he doesn't really get what's going on. Yeah, he, he never thought about this software being bad or being considered bad. So, yeah, it's a, it's a little bit stereotypical presentation. I guess it's, um, yeah, the movie making way of making people look sympathetic. I don't know, maybe the real person was just like this. He, he seemed very sympathetic in those clips that they showed. Um, maybe he was this, uh, like, uh, like this, or yeah, my games are whatever I need and I don't understand anything else except computers. Maybe, maybe he was like that, I don't know. Um, but yeah, it seemed a little bit yeah, stereotypical, not bad. But, yeah, how you would present someone like that. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I feel like I complained quite a bit. But, um, no, it, it's still a very nice movie. I enjoyed it very much. It's very worth watching. Especially just if you, even if you just feel like you're interested in this part of history. Like this early internet age. I think that is a thing that's not been um, explored so much in movies. Um, I, I forgot her name, the director of uh, this TV glow movie. Let me check. I saw the TV glow by Jane Schönbraun and uh, I think she, they, I forgot what pronouns. Um, they should be safe. Um, sad that um, most people don't really make movies about people looking at screens and uh, yeah, that's what happened there when I saw the TV glow happened and that movie they made before, I think. I didn't watch them, but I listened to a podcast where the conversation uh, came to that point and uh, yeah, I feel like that's maybe why these early internet things or stuff aren't really explored in movies because, yeah, you're sitting in front of a screen looking at someone, looking at screens. I had maybe similar to people in suits talking about uh, programming, not the most um, visually pleasing aspect as long as you don't show crazy stuff going on on the screen, but then why don't you just show it on the screen? Why do you show it on the screen in the screen? It's just too many screens. Uh, so I get it why, why people don't really do that. But I think it's very nice uh, 
that we get this aspect of history here and that this director, uh, Mr. Matsumoto, is very concerned about these social issues, about uh, yeah, police, um, about the police not following the rules, uh, which is something that happens very, very often in Japanese, um, probably in, generally in movies, but uh, yeah, in Japanese movies, somehow in this very dramatic, uh, serious context, not in, uh, I don't know, sorry, like uh, uh, revenge movies or <laughs> something. I don't know. Uh, it's, uh, like I said, it's a really worth watching, very good movie with small small things that aren't perfect but uh, I mean not perfect is still uh, still very good so uh, yeah give it a try if you're interested in this uh, in this in these themes and it's uh, worth a try uh, available at Saka soon soonish um, go and watch it watch the other stuff um, yeah, like I said, so far from what I have seen, maybe not their best movie, but their best movies are really, really great. So, no issue here with this being maybe a tiny bit lower. Give it a try, watch it, have fun, see you soon, uh, thank you, bye.